back to Bites of Pi. Today we're going to cover a recursive solution to a real world problem. Till now we've been working with the very basic building blocks of, of computer programming. Now that we've gone into algorithms and recursive solutions, we can see how we can apply recursive solutions to real world problems. Let's take Google Maps. If you've used Google Maps before, or if you've used any type of GPS software, you're familiar with path tracing or, map or path finding. What you also notice is that there's sometimes multiple paths on which to get from A to B. Now, between, a, between two points, there's a ton of roads. If I dive in deeper, here's a, here's a path between uh, the a high school and a, mall, and a mall. If I dig in deeper, I can see there's, there's a whole bunch of different roads that this system can take. Well, how does Google Maps know not to take one of these little dinky roads? It could go down one of these roads, but they're all leading to a lot of dead ends. Well, programmatically, you can fight, figure that out using recursion. I can, from every single point on a road, when I get to a junction point, there's a couple paths I can take. So here I am driving down the road, and I can see up here, well, there's a couple roads right here I could take. I could go to the left, or I could go to the right, or I could keep going straight. I could go down a path. I could send an algorithm to follow down a path to see if there's any path to the destination point. Uh, if I'm not successful, I can keep going down a, a certain path, or I can go to the right. While Google Maps is probably using a much, very more sophisticated algorithm, we're going to use a very primitive version of this type of algorithm. Essentially, I'm going to, at every junction point, I'm going to try going down a certain path. And I say, can I get to my path going this way? And it'll try all different kinds of paths recursively. You keep calling itself saying, OK, I get to this point. Try this path. OK, I get to this point. Try this path. Oh, there's a dead end. OK, back to where I was. Try this path. And I can keep calling myself recursively on find path. If I had a function called traverse or find path, at every junction point, I'm going to test all the different junction points to see if it's a valid path to the end point. Here, if I tested this junction point, I'm only going to I'm going to test it going this way. I hit an end point, and then I'm going to try going this way. And note, there's many different ways you can get to the same end point. Notice, it's while Google, Google is a little more sophisticated, it also tracks estimated time. Okay, this if I took this path, it's a smaller path, a smaller route. It'll probably take me 27 minutes versus going this route. I'd go 30 minutes, or this route would be 33. We're not going to get into that level of sophistication. The What we're going to cover today is whenever I get to a junction point, let me find an, a way to get from point A to point B. At every junction, I'm going to recursively test paths. Let's show you what that looks like. Here is our classic maze runner. And here we've built a maze with ones and zeros. We're going to start our maze at row zero, column zero, and we're going to end the maze here at row eight, column 13. Now, a valid path is a set of ones. We've dictated as a set of ones. This is actually a, a valid path. Think of the zeros as just land without an actual road. So we're not going to include that. You can kind of visually see different paths we can take in certain junction points where there's different paths we can go down. Now not all the, the paths will end in success because I could go down this, I can like right here, if I go down one, I don't, I'm not going to get any further. There, I've got zero surrounding me so I know I've hit a dead end. We're going to start off by calling traverse. This is a very simple traverse, this is a very simple main function. We're going to create a new maze, and we're going to tra traverse starting at point zero, zero. And this is our recursive function here. It's a more sophisticated recursive function than we've dealt with so far. It returns a Boolean. It'll return a Boolean. If I find a path out of the maze, if, if traverse can find a path out of the maze, it'll return true, and it'll print the map out again and say the puzzle was solved. 
Otherwise, it'll say there is no path out of, out of the maze. There is possibility that we don't find a valid path out of this maze. Let's take a look at the traverse function. Here we are in the traverse function. We're going to start off by creating a Boolean done. So essentially, this function will say I am on whether this row and this column, a specific point on the map, is on the path to get out of the maze. It'll start off by say, setting this variable as false. So done will represent whether the path that we're on is a valid path out of the, out of the maze. We're going to first check to see if it's a valid path because I could have landed on a zero or I could have landed outside of, of my maze. If I don't have a valid path, I'm going to return false. Let's take a look at this valid function. So what makes a point on the map valid? Well, first off, we're checking to see if the cell that we're on, that we're standing on, is in the boundaries of the maze. So because we're going to look to certain points within the maze, we may look outside the boundaries. Say we go to negative one. Well, negative one is not inside the array. We're going to, it won't be a valid point on the maze. So this is what, if the row that we're passing in is greater than or equal to zero, so that we know that's inside the maze, inside, it's in a, it's in a, it's not a negative row. If the row is less than the length, so we know that we haven't gone, it's, it's somewhere between zero and eight in this, in this example. We haven't gone outside of the, the rows. If the column is greater than or equal to zero and the column is less than the column size, we know that the point that we're sitting on is a valid point inside the maze. So we've gotten that far. So we know we're sitting on at least somewhere in that grid. Now we're going to check to see, are we sitting on path? Uh, and what we've defined path up here is one. So essentially, if I'm sitting on a one, then I know it's a valid path. If I'm sitting on a zero, I know it's not a valid path. Now, as we go through the maze, we're going to be kind of like Hansel and Gretel, and we're going to leave a breadcrumb. Every valid path that we're going to have is a three. So if I check it as a three or a seven, it's not a valid path. The only way it could be valid is if it's one. That's this path variable here. All right, so if it's one, we return true. I'm, I'm standing on a point in the map that's a valid path. Otherwise, if it's a zero, three, seven, or whatever, it's going to return false. That's what this function does. You're gonna to need to keep this function in mind because you may see this on the, any tests or exams later on. Okay, back to the traverse function. All right, we've checked to see if this, the cell that we're standing on is a valid path. We're gonna now, like Hansel and Gretel, mark it as tried. So remember, tried is a number three. So if we remember, keep this in mind, path equals one, tried equals three, and final equals seven. We're going to set this, if we're on a one, we're gonna set it to three so we don't backtrack. The way we're going to be recursively searching is we're going to be checking up, down, left, and right uh, to see if it's valid path. If we we don't want to check a path that we've already tried. So if we're on a valid path, we're going to put a breadcrumb down so we don't so our logic doesn't backtrack down the path that we were at and have some sort of circular recurs recursive call. Okay, we put our breadcrumb down. The next thing we're going to do is look at our base case. Well, if we're at our successful base case, we are at the end of the maze. We're at the the last row, and if we're on the last column, then we want to mark done as true. We don't have to look any further. We're at the end. We're done. Otherwise, if we're not at the end of the maze, we're going to have to check the paths to our the path down, the path to the right of us, the path above us, and the path to the left of us. We're going to start this, and this is really key because this is this will be really key for uh, a, a test or exam on what direction are we looking at first. So if we look right here, I'm calling myself, I'm in the traverse function, I'm going to look down the path just underneath me. And what does that mean by that? So 
if I have my rows, I'm going to bring bring this up here. So say this is my, my maze. I'm going to start off right here. I'm going to look at row plus one with the same column. So if I'm on zero, zero, I'm going to look at row one, column zero. So I'm looking down. If it can't find anything, if I've gone down this path and it as far as I can go, and I don't find a valid path, then it will search to the right. So row column one. So I've looked down this way. If I can't find a valid path, I'm going to look this way. All right, I'm, I'm going to look to my right. So that's row, so same zero, row zero, column one. If that doesn't work, I'm going to look up, row minus one. So if I'm here, I would look above it, and that would not be a valid cell, but I can say I'm row, row zero minus one on the same column, and then I'm going to look to the left, which would be column minus one. So at any point in this grid, I'm going to first look down, then I'm going to look right, then I'm going to look up, then I'm going to look left. You're going to have to look at this and figure out what goes first, because it will matter. And we'll get into that as we go through our de demonstration. All right. So if we've gone down a path, if we go, if we look down, and we find it, we don't have to do it. We don't have to look right, left, and up, right, up, and left. If we found a valid path that we can go down, we don't have to search. We already found it. We're done. If we look from this point in the cell, if we found a path outside the maze, we want to mark mark this current path as the final as the lat as a number seven so here's remember final is number seven if we've looked down if we've looked down all the paths to the left to the right uh, down right up and left and we are on we found a way outside the maze we want to mark the trail as final as final we're gonna mark it with a seven we're going to do a reverse breadcrumb trail so we're gonna mark it with a seven and then we're going to return done. So if we didn't find a valid path outside the the, if we're going if we didn't find the valid path outside, we're going to return false. This will be false. The only time we return true is if we get to the end, we find true, and then we're going to re to recursively return true back down the path that we found. So that's a little confusing, but. The cool thing is I have a little demonstration that I did. I've done, this is written in Java, but I wrote the same thing in JavaScript, and I can kind of show you what that would look like. This is the same algorithm here. So let's run it. All right, I've got it in debugger mode, so I can kind of step through. I'm starting here. I, this is a valid, it was a one, it was a valid path. Now I'm going, now looking at our logic over here, I'm going to look down. I've gotten to the path, I've marked it. I'm going to look down, all right, and look for a path there. So the first, next, the next cell I should see marked is here, okay? I'm here and I'm marked this as a valid path. Now I'm going to look down. I look down, nope, there's not a valid path. Okay, I look right, not a valid path. I look up, oh, I've already been that way, so that's not valid. It's not a one. And then I look left, that's not valid. Okay, so I've hit a dead end going down this path. I still keep it as three because I've gone down this path, but I'm going to return back to my original node, saying this is not a valid path. All right, so I've tried back to my first node. I'm back here at the traverse. I've looked down and I, I found a dead end. Now I'm going to look right. All right, so the next thing I should check out is this path. All right, so I'm heading down this path. I'm going to check down. There's nothing there. Now I'm going to check right. There's a valid path, so let's start down this path. All right. I want to look down. Up oh, there's a valid path. Down there's not a valid path. Look right. I'm going to start down this path. Look down. Look right. Now I'm at a junction here. Which one do you think I'm going to take first, given our, given our logic here? I'm going to go down. So I'm going to start going down this path. This will really make a difference going through. So keep on following that logic. I'm going to continue down a path. Okay, so I'm continually looking down, left, right. And notice I didn't take this branching path here because I'm still following the down path from this, this node. All right, 
We're getting to this point. Now, I'm looking down. I don't see a I don't see a valid path. I'm going to look right. Now I'm going to go down this path. I'm going to continue down this path, but it's a dead end. When I hit this point right here, I'm going to look up, left. I'm going to look down, right, up, left. Find that I'm at a dead end, and I stop. Now, I'm going to, because this is a dead end, I'm going to keep going back down the path. There's a whole zeros all the way down the path until I get to another, until I get to another valid path I could take. So here, I follow back down the path. I'm popping all these Fun all these functions off the stack and now I'm going to be heading to the right so here continuing down the path and lo and behold I found a way outside the maze continuing on till I hit the end now I'm at this point right here I found I'm at this point where I'm at the end of the maze so I'm going to return true and now I'm going to start popping the stack off with trues. Now, as I pop them back off, if I find it, if I find a, a valid path, I'm going to mark it as with sevens. So you can see this as I'm going back down my path that's valid. I keep popping them off at, and replacing them with sevens. Now note, I didn't go back down this path because it wasn't valid. and we've reached the end of our maze. So this is how you can continually see every time I got to a node I would pop another, push another recursive call to itself on the stack saying follow this path, follow this path. And when I got to the end of the maze I kept popping it off, returning true and marking it as the path that led out of the maze. One of the things you're going to have to keep in mind is on an exam we'll you'll probably be presented with a grid like this and you'll have to find the correct output grid based on the logic that we have here now it may not be it may not be look down look right look up look left that'll make a difference on which paths we take outside the grid now if I tried to switch up something like switching looking uh, I want to look up first instead of uh, down. Let's, let's switch these up and, and see what happens. Notice there's a different pattern because I've switched looking up and looking down. I have a different pattern because I try it like for right here instead of a three here I have a one because I first look up then I look right and I found the path to the right I never actually check this down path same thing here I've checked the up path before I went down and vice versa I've gone right and right before I went down so the output would look very different based on which path we take down the trail this concludes the recursive maze runner Thanks for watching.